All right, we're back. One more video here, just based on the types of guys that you should be selecting your side. Are they must-haves? Are they someone to avoid? Are they someone that's a maybe uh, and just depend on your side? And we're going to jump into ownership for a little bit here. Um, you know, 46.16% for Nico Hines, which is pretty cool. There with uh, with Tungol Pap Crichton rounding out that over 40%, guys. Uh, you know, pretty much everyone else makes a lot of sense. I'm so surprised that so many people started with David Mwale. Um just assuming that he was going to be a gun. That's the, the, the big worry with the real real uh, youngsters. It's just that you know, they all get brought in slowly. You see what's happening with Savage, for example. Uh, he's just getting you know brought in slowly to the team. That's for sure. Who's hot? We've got Hastings and Tass. You know, pretty high on the on the who's hot list, which is uh, pretty fair. You got guys like uh, Elliot, you know, Kodak, Leary, uh, another 1.87% getting him in. You know, Crichton, Assi. As well, Papali, Tamalalo, uh, a bunch of got you know people bring in those mids, which makes a lot of sense. And who's not? So Payne Haas is being traded out for over five percent, which is very interesting, you know, given he's only probably going to be out for one week. But yeah, I can, I can understand a little bit. Kurt Mann makes sense. You know he's peaked anyway. Vafita definitely. Schneider's the weird one. I th I'd suggest people to hold on to him. I think that's a silly move that one. And in terms of the other guys, Vafita, I just don't think you know with the mid. When us needing mid cover this week, I'm not under, not understanding why he's being traded out so much, and he's not very expensive anyway. And then your know, Arthur's makes sense, Kobe Hetherington makes sense, Ilias, I don't understand why, Maxi King, same thing, uh, Mitchie Moses, he's had one bag week, guys, he got 70 odd the week before, so just be aware of that, just don't trade for one week, I think that's a silly idea. All right, we'll start with uh, Isaiah Tass, and, and coming in with a, obviously a negative break even there, he had a 26 in his first game in 17 minutes, and then a 51 in the full 80 there. Uh, against the Eagles, and he has a pretty nice run coming up. The Broncos, you know, the Warriors, the Canberra, Raiders, Tigers, Gold Coast, Dragons, and finally get to a harder game in the Parramatta Eels. So if he manages to keep his spot, which I think he really deserves to, if you're looking at their team from the, the start of the, the year, they were playing, you know, Jackson, Jackson Bolo there, for example, and and I think Isaiah Tass is playing better than anyone they've put in that left edge role, uh, you know, the left edge, 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 center edge role. Uh, but... Yeah, the try assist line break, the try, probably not going to happen every week. You know, the only one missed tackle, 19, is really nice to see. Uh, and the three errors, I suppose you could say, probably won't happen each week as well. So if you take a little bit of that all out, probably averaging somewhere around the 30-odd, and at 280K, you're going to make 100K or so, pretty comfortably. Uh, for a cash down option, who, yeah, I think he's going to be pretty solid. I, I can't see him being someone that is going to score you like a 17. You know, with that, with that kind of tackle numbers there uh, in a game where... They obviously were able to win that. It was a pretty high-scoring game. So to have that many tackles and only miss one, I think it was pretty impressive. And you know, going up against you know, Gola, for example, and, and he he ran over him in one of his runs. So he's only going to get better and better with uh, with time on the park. So he's definitely an interesting option. And owned by 11, you know, over 11% now, I think is a pretty solid one at 280K if you need a cash down this week. Jackson Acing, so uh, 575K now. Obviously, you know, pretty, pretty cheap there. And... A great option this week, you know, coming in with, with three super good scores there, 50, 63, and 76. Getting a lot in base. Missed tackles aren't very high. Running the ball plenty. You know, he's had his lowest uh, run meters of 95 there. And kicking the ball a lot more in these last three weeks. So really taking control of the team and doing a great job. He's kicking the goals as well. So plenty happening for Hastings at the moment. And their run isn't too bad. you got Manly, Cowboys, you know, Bulldogs. Rabbitohs there, and if someone's going to play over the origin period, I think he's a, a good person to bring in your side, and owned by a high percentage in the top run 100 now. So, Hastings, definitely a man to be able to pick. Adam Elliott, 399, was, is a very, very intriguing pick there. And, you know, coming off a, a lower score, obviously with you know, 23 into a 40 and a 53 there. So, played 52 minutes of lock, and then he got 68 minutes last week. Uh, he picked up, I don't know why he, didn't, he wasn't given that line break, but he went straight through anyway. So, uh, yeah, helpful for those that are potentially picking him up now. But the 35 tackles, the three, the two tackle breaks, the three offloads, uh, 123 meters. So if you can stick anything towards what he did in round seven, getting 52 minutes without doing anything spectacular, uh, just the 31 tackles. You have a penalty conceded with one turnover tackle, a 77 meter game for him. Anywhere around that 35 to 40 odd, you know, with that random big game, which he's capable of. I think he's going to be a solid option. Just be aware, he's uh, playing for Sticky and the Raiders, and who knows what's going to happen there. But the mid and the edge duel is really, really important this week with a few uh, guys out in that mid position. So he's that cheaper guy that I'd be saying is a good selection. If you've got Leo Thompson, just hold him and, and use him as, a, as cover for sure. All right, Cotter, also another guy great for cover with the mid and the hooking position. 
uh, especially that mid there. And you know, coming off a really big 80 minute role, I'm not sure if he's going to play the 80, but it's you know, as Peyton said, really good to see him getting a, a string of games together in a row from round three to round eight now. And and minutes have been a little bit up and down, and he got that big one obviously there. Don't I wouldn't expect the 80 every week, but definitely a solid option. Obviously, you know, the one low score of 34, and anything other than that has been a 46 uh, plus. So. A 642 definitely got around you know 60k to make uh, to get him up to that five uh, sorry that 50 average and 700k. So at worst you get a, a cut price you know a little bit of a cut price keeper that can you know be your 17th 16th 17th 18th man at the end of the year. He plays that first buy round. Plenty to like about Cotter and you know Tamalolo these types of players we've already spoken about being a buy as well. Crichton, so he has that dual position cover as well with the mid and the edge. 619k isn't anything uh, anything crazy there. And coming off a 66, mainly in base stats, which is great. So 54 in base for him. And you know, finally a good score, which we've seen over the years has been a guy that's really been dominant uh, on that edge for the Roosters. And, and good to see him do that again. I think, you know, once we've now we've seen that one, I think there's a, a much higher chance that we're going to see it continuously. You know, we haven't seen it all year, and we finally got that just in base, not in tries. So I think that he can definitely do it again. But I'd say that, you know, Kota could be just as good as an option. You know, Tamalolo probably as just as solid as an option because we're banking on Crichton doing it week in, week out. All right, Dejan Arce. So a bit of a strange one with him. We've got him for, you know, one game this week, this year, sorry, with a 35 uh, with two try assists and, you know, nothing really going wrong for him. A couple of errors, obviously, but then, you know, 14 tackles for one miss was solid. You know, got some kick meters, got the meters gain there. Just for him at that price, I just think you can go for, obviously, you get the dual position cover. I think you can go for TAS better uh, as a better option, 36k cheaper. And um, obviously, doesn't have the dual, but, you know, I think just has more time in the in the team, definitely. Uh, and then you know, potentially a chance to make more money. So if you need him, you know, if you think he's good, then that's fine. But I think you know Tass might be a little bit better. Just going off, obviously guessing a little bit as to if these guys can stay on the side. But that's obviously part of the game. Sure star six oh four. I think you can wait on him. But if you've seen his scores from you know last year, there's plenty of scores in the fifties there, sixties, the random forty odds, so averaging that fifty odd there. 45 last game, got the try save, we got the try assist, we got three tackle breaks and offload, so it was great to see, good to see him back playing a uh, nice minute, 69 minutes. Uh, 604k, he's priced obviously at that 45, 20, 22 average, so has that potential to stay at that 45 I'd say, or you know get somewhere around that 50 mark, and it might be ideal just to wait for him a little bit, but definitely put him on the radar as someone potentially you'd like to buy. Cody Walker, very interesting one, at 478k, so obviously lost a fair bit of cash, and is coming off two much better scores. So got two try, obviously a try in each of those games, and the try assists are coming back again. If we look at what happened last year, obviously the try assists were crazy, and he was getting a lot of you know high 40s, and we get a 60 or 70, and you know really dominating there. Kick meters weren't anything to sneeze at last year, and that's the same. Run meters uh, were, have been very much down compared to last year. You know a lot of games where he's running over 100 meters and, and stuff like that. There's definitely a little bit of a risk there, but I think that he could be someone that is going to slightly improve over the season. You see what's happening with the with the Roosters. You see what happened with Tedesco over the first you know six to seven oh, about six weeks there. That he took a little bit to work into the season, and we're seeing that with Cody Walker and, and coming back into two good games there. I think he has the potential to average somewhere in the 40s, you know, on a, on a regular basis, which is what he's done in previous years. So if you're banking on that. He's, you know, 10 to 15 points undervalued. Probably the closer to about that 12 mark, I'd say, for a 45 average would be safe and about 150k to make. So definitely someone that's on to be on your radar as not playing Origin as well and could be a pickup in your side. All right, Tupelotu. A 312k now is a little bit annoying, but, you know, coming off a, a really nice game and probably, you know, his best game of his career, obviously. I just think he was really, really dominant. You know, ran for 193 metres, six tackle breaks, you know, really, really, you know, just a just a strong game for a young fella, and he'll you know get a lot of confidence out of that. I think he'll probably make a bit of cash, but it's like you know, can you fit him into your side when you've got those other options there? He's wing fullback cover, so potential uh, if you want to go him over Dejan Arce, for a, for example. But yeah, definitely on the radar as as someone we need to speak about. Uh, who is a potential trade-in. And last one, I just wanted to have Will Smith as probably a void this week. We've got Jaden Campbell on the extended bench. You know, Brimson will go back to six. Will Smith will go back to the bench. So, you know, does score well when he gets his opportunity at, you know, in the sixth role of 39 to 42. But how long he gets that for? Yes, he'll make a little bit of money over the next few weeks, but there's every chance that Campbell could even go to one this week and in Brimson back to the sixth role. So that's it with Will Smith. And that's it with this video, guys. I hope that really helped you, that deeper dive into those players and, you know, being able to, 
make your trades this week. I will jump in and do a Q&A video as well, covering a bunch of those YouTube comments there. Um, and a couple more videos just based on, you know, potentially my trades as well. And uh, we'll go from there. Have a good day, guys.